My name is Miguel Rosa's Wall Educator, and I'm going to show you how to do this fresh fade right here. Not with these glasses on, not with this coat on, because that would just be ridiculous. So stay tuned and see what we do. Today on his ball fade, we're actually gonna fade from top to bottom. So one of the first things that we're gonna do since he has textured curly hair is kind of just comb the hair out. That way it's not intertwined down against the scalp. So you wanna kind of comb that hair out. The first thing we're gonna do is put our one and a half guard on our cordless wall senior here. And I'm gonna be cutting going with the grain. I have my taper lever all the way closed and we're going to be cutting going with the grain to debulk the hair on the side of his head before we start our actual fading process. We're not going to take the fade too high up into the bridal ridge area because then we're going to get, our, get ourselves into some trouble when it comes to blending the hair in the transition area which is a hair that meets between the fade and the hair on top. So right now we have our one and a half on and we are cutting the hair going with the grain. So for some of you that might not know exactly what that term means, cutting hair with the grain means cutting hair with the direction of the flow in which the hair grows. Cutting against the hair, cutting against the grain would be when you're cutting against the directional flow of the natural growth. So I have my cutting, my, uh, my taper lever all the way closed. And right now we are just debulking the hair. Our second step, I am going to put my one guard on and now we are going to cut against the grade with the taper lever all the way closed and we are going to start our guideline. So as I'm going up, you are going to notice that I now have a guideline started. So we're gonna go ahead and create that first guideline. And as soon as we have that guideline, now what I'm gonna do is go right on the line, about a half an inch above that line, cutting with the grain, with my one lever closed, or with the, with the taper lever closed. So you can kind of see now how that kind of blends that together a little bit. And like I said, I'm only going about a half an inch above that line that I put in. Next, we're gonna open the lever all the way up and right in this area where the shadow's at, we're gonna go ahead and take it about a half an inch going through it and kind of C scooping outwards. So next I see a little bit of bulk right up in here. I'm gonna take my, 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 my one guard with the lever all the way open and we're gonna go ahead and just graze down against some of that going with the frame. So I'm gonna use a baby brush just to kind of wipe the hair away. And now we're gonna start our guideline. So we're gonna go up and we're only gonna take our zero, or a trimmer, probably about, I wanna say maybe about a half inch above the ear. I don't like to go too high on my fades because if you go too high, then you, you can have more of a trouble of getting that line out in the back or on the sides of the head and then you end up having a super high fade. So to keep yourself in a safe zone, Keep that line a little lower because you always have more room to take that fade up if you have to. So we put a soft line in. Rather than putting that hard line in that you see in some videos where they're just kind of pressing the blade right against the scalp going all the way across, nice and sharp, we're actually going to go up and once you get to the area where you want your fade to be, just kind of C-scoop outwards a little bit 
but soften up that line. You still want to have a guideline there so that you can see what you're doing, but soften it up by kind of C scooping outwards. And what that's going to make it do, or what's going to happen with that, is it makes your next step easier when you when you get your trim or your clippers out to fade it in. It's going to make your job so much easier to blend that line out. So what we're going to do now is use our cordless wall magic clips, and I'm going to start off with my taper lever all the way open just first to kind of see where we're at to see if I'm able to get that line out before I decide to start adjusting my taper lever we're just going to go ahead and start off by laying the clip blade flat against this area right in here maybe about I would say a quarter of an inch going above that line okay next we're going to go ahead and bring our taper lever down about halfway open to halfway closed and we're going to do the same thing or a couple of things that I'm that I'm looking for or the couple senses that I'm using right now is feel you know to see if I can feel the hair cutting I'm listening to see if I can hear it cutting and I'm actually able to see if whether or not the hair is being cut or wet. So those are some other senses that you should be using while cutting. So next, what I'm gonna do is put my half guard on. Some people also refer to it as your 16th. And I'm gonna have my taper lever open, and I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to blend a little bit more of these shadowy areas in right along this fade right in here. So like I said, it's better to start off with your taper lever open, because sometimes if you start off with it closed, you might accidentally cut too much hair away. So always start off with your taper, your taper lever open. That way you can always come back to make your adjustments. If the hair in fact is not being cut, then you know you need to bring it down a little bit. So we're gonna bring it down a tiny bit because it really wasn't cutting too much away. Now I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So I have it all the way closed. And we're just trying to get this blend a little bit tighter so i'm going to step take a couple steps backwards and what i notice is a little bit of a heaviness right in here so instead of always thinking that we're going to have to reach for another guard sometimes you got to do some clipper over comb so i'm going to get my comb we're going to tilt my client's head just a little bit and we're going to go ahead and try to get this blended out we're going to lay our comb nice and flat in the hair and i'm actually running the blade right flat against the comb going upwards and I have my comb angled outwards so that as I'm going in I don't accidentally go into the hair that's up in here because I'm focusing on blending the hair right down here so we're gonna put it in nice and flat and then bend it backwards just a tiny bit so that I can go in and then it comes out without touching the hair right up here I've heard about misconceptions as far as people thinking you can't clip or over comb when dealing with curly or coarse hair, but you definitely can. So as you notice, that is getting that blended in right there. I actually do a lot of raking when I'm, when I'm cutting in the shop. That helps to blend the hair in. And it actually helps to, to cut corners when, when it comes time to switching guards. Now real quick, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my comb up into the hair and kind of pull the hair out this way. Not so much the longer hair up above, but more of this hair right in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to kind of just pull that hair outwards. And this is the part where we're just going to kind of freehand right into that hair, the little hairs that are just sticking out. So we're going to go ahead and do the other side of his head now. So on this side of the head, we're going to do a recap of what we did when we first began. We use our one and a half guard 
with the taper, the taper le lever all the way closed. So we're going to cut going with the grain because right now what we're gonna do is debulk the hair. I, like I said earlier, I don't personally like to fade from bottom to up. I like to fade from top to bottom. So I like to get the hair kind of short. That way it kind of gives me a good view on what type of head shape that I have to work with so that when I am doing my fade later on, when I'm cutting the hair short with my detailers, I can kind of tell how high up to go on it. So right now, like I said, we're just going down with the grain. And like I mentioned earlier, going with the grain means cutting hair in the directional flow of the growth. Next, we are going to use my one and I'm gonna cut going up against the grain. And my taper lever is all the way closed. So as I'm going up, I kind of see scoop out a little bit right in here. So as you're going up, you kind of create a gradual C scoop, not a hard C scoop because then you're going to put too much of a weight line. So a little bit of a C scoop. And then also you don't want to go too high up into this because then it's going to be hard to blend into that later on. So you want to stay up right below. So right up in here you have the bridal ridge. You want to stay about an inch and a half below it. So now we're gonna turn it around and right up in here where this thicker shadowy hair is, this, this weight line, we're gonna go ahead and cut with the grain. Notice how I'm holding the clippers. This makes it much easier when you hold the clippers like this with my thumb on top, cause then I can kinda maneuver it better in my hand. So I hope you guys like what you're seeing so far. Uh, don't be afraid to go or, you know, don't hesitate to leave a comment or a like. If you guys are interested in the tools that Wall carries, you can go to wallpro.com. The tool that I'm specifically using right now is a cordless magic clip. What's so cool about the cordless magic clip is it has staggered tooth, it has a patented staggered tooth blade on it. And this really helps for on scout fading. Now I'm gonna open it up and right in here, about a half an inch up, we're just gonna go ahead and try to blend this shadow in right here before we move on to our next step, which we'll be using our detailer to get it nice and bald on the side. So now we're gonna use our cordless wall detailer LI to get this, the hair nice and tight to the skin. Look how easy the hair is cut away with no effort. This is one of, one of the best tools that honestly I've ever laid my hands on. Uh, before, the, before I got this tool, I actually had the, the corded detailer, which is also a really good tool. But you know, we're in that wave right now where everybody wants everything cordless. So it's definitely a really good tool to go pick up. 100 minute runtime, lithium ion battery comes with a docking station. So when you're not using it, you're charging it because it's sitting on the docking station. So it basically never really will die. Okay, so you notice as I'm going up, I didn't create that hard line like what some people do. They go in and they kind of stab into the hair to create that really solid line. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm coming from the bottom up and right when I get to the area where my guideline is gonna be, I kind of just flick out a little bit. That way I'm softening my line. That's called soft line fading. That's gonna make our next step nice and easy when it comes to blending this hair. It's, gonna, it's just gonna be so much easier. And I'll show you all that here in a second. So, so now we have the wall magic clip. We're gonna lay it nice and flat with our taper lever open. Go about a half an inch up and as you're going through the hair, you're gonna wanna gradually C scoop backwards. If you do too harsh of a C-scoop, it's gonna create more of a weight line for yourself. So just kind of go up into the hair 
and just kind of graze it, grazing that hair above it, and kind of C scoops gradually backwards. It's really important to use some type of a brush on the side of the head when doing a bald fade so that it helps because it will help remove the hair that is sticking to the scalp. The reason why I like to use the corner of the blade is because if you try to put the whole blade in there, say I'm only just focused on one spot and I put the whole blade in, I may put a whole line going across. So it's much more easier and safer to get a line out when you just put the corner of the blade in like that. I know I mentioned earlier on the other side of the head as far as the technique that I call raking. Right in here, we can put our 16th on or our half guard on like I did on the other side, which I did demonstrate that. But if you wanna save that step and cut that corner out of the equation, all you have to do is angle your blade at a 90 degree angle, just like that. So what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna C-scoop. And as I'm C-scooping, I'm gonna C-scoop through it, or not C-scoop, I'm sorry. We're gonna rake through the hair, and as I'm raking through, I kind of C-scoop up, upwards. So right in here, I kind of see some hair kind of hanging over, so what I can do is I can just freehand this. We can just go straight up right in here and just graze all the little hairs, those little wild hairs that are just sticking out. Go ahead and graze those right away. That way, when our client looks at itself in the mirror, it's nice and straight here on the side of the head. There's not a bunch of hair down in here sticking all the way out. Up here, the hair is sticking out. That's part of the style, but down in here where the fade is, you want that to be nice and flat when the, when the client goes to look in the mirror. Some of these moves that I'm making, some of these techniques that I'm doing are a little bit more advanced, but I do like to share with you the possibilities that exist when achieving a nice blended ball fade. So now that I've got the blend right where I like it, what I'm gonna have to do right up in here is blend a little bit of this weight line in with the hair on top. So this is more of the transition area like I mentioned earlier. The transition, what I like to describe, is the area where the fade on the side of the head and the long hair on the top meet. So let's go ahead and we're gonna kinda put our comb in there and kind of pull some of those curls out. And now what we're gonna do is clip or over comb some of that away to create a nicer transitional blend. So I have my comb nice and flat. I lay it nice and flat, and then I pull it out a little bit. Lay it in there, angle it out. Now we can kind of just freehand a little bit of this hanging over, kind of bring some of that out. And now what I'm doing is just, I'm just kind of getting little hairs that are sticking out. And it's not gonna mess with any of this longer stuff. Even this piece right here, see, you can do that many times. It's not gonna cut that away. It's mainly just gonna cut the little flyaways. So now what we're gonna do, I got the side looking pretty nice. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the back of the head and create a nice blend on the back of the head. Right up in here is where the weight line is, and this is where this is how high up I've taken the detailer here. And right here, you can tell it's a little lower, so now we're just gonna have to make our adjustments on the back of the head. So I'm gonna start off using my cordless detailer LI, and as I'm going up, I don't need to take it very high because right now we're just creating that first guideline that we created around the, re the, the rest of the head that we've done so far. So now that we've done that, next we want to debulk all this. We're not going to keep on blending from here and trying to blend higher. We're just going to go ahead and remove all this hair right away to debulk it. So we're going to start with the same thing we did on the sides of the head, which was our one and a half guard with the taper lever all the way closed, going with the grain. I'm staying right on top of the occipital bone. I don't want to go too much higher than it because if I do, then I'm going to get myself into some dangerous waters up in here. 
where the hair is gonna be really, really hard to blend with the hair on top. So that's why it's real important to stay low on the back of the head. So now I have my one on and I have the taper lever closed and we're gonna go down. So right in here, you can notice I'm going with the grain and you can notice right in here is where I'm starting to go down. Where when I, when I had the one and a half on, I had it way up in here going down. But right now that I got the one on closed, I only have it right in this area going down. And now what I'm gonna do with the taper lever closed is kind of bring this up a little bit. So maybe about an inch up, right in here. And you can kind of tell right in here how high I went. So I'm gonna to have to go a little higher up in here and then I'll bring it down, which means I'm gonna to have to do the same thing on this side over here. So now right in here where you see this shadow with the taper lever still down, let's put our one right in there and see if that does anything, it might not. I can hear it cutting a little bit, not cutting much. So what I'm gonna do is open my taper lever and we're gonna go ahead and cut against the grain right in that area. Now there's two things we can do. We can clip or over comb the hair right in here. Or we can put a guard on and see if that will help to remove that hair and create a better blend. So I got this bottom part right here, and now we have to angle our comb this way and go up into this weight, this weight line or this, this darker area right in here. If there's any hair that's, that's like curly hair that may be like coiled down to the scalp, it's gonna bring that out. You see all that right there? So put it in there nice and tight, angle your, your comb backwards, and cut away. So what I'm gonna do to blend this in is I'm actually gonna rake my, my teeth against the scalp to blend that all out. Look at the angle of my blade. I'm not gonna blend this way because the blend needs to follow from here to here. So I'm gonna make sure that I stay, keep the angle of my blade with the direction of the fade. So for an example, the fade starts here and it follows this way. I'm not gonna go like this or go like this because if I go like that, I may put a line in the hair right there. So I'm always going to travel with direction, with the, with the uh, flow of the fade and I'm gonna angle my, my uh, blade accordingly. So these are just examples, okay? So I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna start with connecting it with this, with, with the blend on this side to the back of the head so I can see right in here where I need to soften this up. So go ahead. And, so right in here, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the dark spots and I'm toning those dark spots down so that the, so that the hair all blends together. So what I'm looking at now on the back of the head are just these darker shadows and stuff, and I need to make sure that the blend all matches up. Right now I'm seeing that this side right here is a little higher, and you can tell that this is a little lower, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to bring this side up a little bit to get it all to match. Sometimes on the side of the heads right in here too as well, you're going to have a lot of shadows just because of the different shapes of the head, the bone structure and things like that. And I'm just using the corner of it just to kind of bring that up right in here because I know I'm gonna have to bring all this up here to match this over here. See some little lines of demarcation right here. All right, let's go ahead and continue over to the other side of the head. So what we're having to do is look over here to make sure that I can bring this up to match that side over on that side of the head. So right now I have my blade all the way closed. The taper lever is all the way closed and I'm just using the corner of that blade. So right here, we gotta just bring this up a little bit, get it a little, get it a little lighter. Let me, let me take a step back and kind of look. Sometimes you really gotta take a step back and look at it, otherwise, turn your client toward the mirror so you can use that mirror for a second opinion. Your mirror is gonna show you things your eyes don't see. So right in this area, you can see the fade kind of like goes like that. 
and it could be because of the bone right in here, but either way, we need to bring this area right in here up a little higher. So right there, we're gonna go ahead and bring this higher. Using the corner of my blade, I have it all the way down. Now I open it up a little bit just to get this area right in here. But I wanna make sure we don't cut the hair up here too short. And then right here, you can see a little dark spot. So we're gonna go ahead right in that dark spot only using the corner of my blade because if I was to use the whole width of the blade I may put lines all around it when I'm only working on a specific spot that's why I like to use the corner of my blade I'm gonna stand behind my client I'm gonna take a look on both sides of the head at the same time so I can make sure that the fades on both sides are level to one another and I want to make sure that the blend in the back of the head matches and we're gonna just clip over, clip over comb that shadowy area right in there taper lever open comb laid nice and flat against the head and as you can see it is blending that out I just see some little faint 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 shadowy areas and I'm really just trying to get it real precise now. So far right now, I think I'm pretty good with what I have here. So what I like to do before actually doing the lineup is I like to spray a little bit of hairspray into the line and then comb the hair down. What that does, as soon as the hairspray dries, it's going to make it much more easier for me to line it up. And I usually like to use a pretty good hairspray just because I know it's going to dry a little faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my finger on the forehead down below and then I have the trimmer in my hand. Now I have something to teeter off of so that I can control exactly what I'm doing. Place your hand on his forehead, your finger on his forehead, and then just kind of teeter right in to where you're going to cut. So right in here, what we want to do is we want to create a 90 degree angle. So let's just go ahead and follow the line right over. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this middle part up just a tad, tad bit. Next, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little curved line on the side of the head right here. I'm going to go ahead and start with the left hand side of my trimmer. And I'm going to, I'm going to see where my high point is going to be. I'm, I'm envisioning it right in here. So we're going to go ahead and take it to my high point. And we can pause there for a second. And now I'm going to envision the angle where it's heading so that I know where I want it to end. So this is gonna be the low point of it. So now I'm gonna come up that way and we're gonna meet it right there. Okay, so you always wanna go thin, go nice and skinny, just so you have the angle in which you want it to be. Um, and actually, if you, and as long as you keep it skinny, you're, uh, you got room for a little bit of mistake because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna whiten the front of it up. I want the whiting, or, or I want to thicken up the front of this so that it looks like it's going to a point in the back. And we're gonna whiten the front. I'm just placing it right there on the line that I had made the first time. And as we go back, we're gonna go skinnier and skinnier toward the point. And that's how you create the point. So now we're going to go ahead and just use our blade to get this nice and tight, nice and sharp. 
nice and crispy, whatever you want to say, that's what we're going to do. All right, here we go. I'm just using the inside part of that blade, the heel of the blade, and we're just following that bottom line all the way to the back of the head. Turn them a little bit right there. So that blade definitely, definitely makes it nice and sharp. There we go. Nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and finish off the haircut, adding one more dimension of fading at the bottom using my wall finale. My wall finale has 90 minutes of run time. What it is, is a foil shaver. It comes with the docking station. So when you're not using it, it can be stationed and it's charging while you're not using it. I want you to be able to see the difference of what this does. So in that little spot right there, Look at the difference there. So what we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and continue to follow this step all the way around the head. You don't need to take it too high. I would about the width of a pinky high, all the way around the back of the head. So you can kind of see a little bit of a faint shadow right in here. So this is where I'm gonna put the blade on top of that hair and cut the hair going with the grain to see if that effect does get that line out. So, so what you do is, you're just gonna have to take your, your detailers back out and kinda go up into that hair a tiny bit. And that also will help to get that line out. So I'm gonna kinda show you real fast how to do that with the trimmers. So right in here, you can see a faint shadow. So right here, we're just gonna go right up through that and just kinda See, so scoop that right out. I hope you guys really enjoyed so far what you've seen today. Like I said, go ahead and leave a comment, leave a question. I'm gonna be here on this video to answer all your questions.